fabulous voyage we've shared, my friend. Tvardenfell and new opportunities. Still reading that letter? Lovers know who? No need to confirm or deny it. We all have our secrets. I wonder what Vardenfell has in store for us. Well, that doesn't sound good. This one's still alive, now you? I can see that. Walk this way, and let's make sure everything works after that dreadful shipwreck. Captured by slavers. What a predicament. But at least we're still alive. Go on now. Naryu wants to talk to you. Look what the sea coughed up. Welcome to Vardenfell, land of dark elves, lava flows, and slaves of all descriptions. Speaking of slaves, let me get those manacles off you. Oh, you'll find I'm full of surprises. I have just the thing. Hold still. There. You've been captured by slavers. Haven't you been paying attention? Maybe you hit your head when your ship crashed into the rocks and dumped you onto the bitter coast. The slavers lured your ship in and took their pick of the survivors. Slavers? Me? No. My allegiance leans in an entirely different direction. Let's just say I'm here to help you escape this place. Then you can get back to what you were doing before the slavers so rudely sank your vessel. Not so fast, hero. I need to make sure you can handle yourself in a fight. Not everyone recovers from a near-death experience that quickly. Oh, you can, can you? Then let's see how... Hit me. I want to see what you've got. <laughs> nice. Now follow it up. Impressive. You're just what I need to pull my plan together. Most of the slavers are currently out on a raid. That means it's the perfect opportunity for us to make our escape. Oh, not too much, really. I need you to find a set of slaver clothes so you don't look like one of the prisoners. Plus, we need the gate key, or we'll never make it to the docks. Here, take my spare lockpick in case you need it. I've got a few more things to check on before we can make our escape. You do your part, and I promise you, I'll do mine. An idea? Of course. I just need proof to satisfy my superiors. But don't worry, I'm sure I'll have things well in hand by the time we meet back up.
Drinking the aged Flynn again. Treacherous slave! I'll have your head! Over here. Did you get the things now you wanted? The slavers are returning and plans have changed. Now you sent me to find you and get the gate key. Now you sent a signal to the house guard in Sedanin, and that's when the slaver horn started sounding. The slavers must have been hiding nearby, and now they're on their way back. We have to hurry. You are a ray of sunshine on a cloudy morning. I'll lead the prisoners through the gate and see what we can find to get off this island. You meet up with Naryu at the Overlook, and then rendezvous with us at the docks. I couldn't have done much better myself, hero. Good work down there. There's one more thing to do if you're up to it. Time is short, but I have something to tell you. You've earned that much, at least. I'm an assassin, a Morag Tong agent here to complete a job. The writ I carry gives me the legal authority to end my target's life. No questions asked. I'm here to kill Captain Svardstar, leader of this band of slavers. He's as bad as they come. Because I need your help. I can kill the captain and ten of his thugs without breaking a sweat. But the slaver's ship? It's faster and stronger than anything the locals can throw at it. If we don't scuttle the ship, we'll be right back to business. Not big on gratitude, I see. Look, I signaled Sedanin, but they won't get here in time to stop the slavers. With your help, we can end the slavers, save their prisoners, and sink their ship. Otherwise, the prisoners are as good as dead. Gather some fire salt and kindle pitch from the docks. With them, you can make a firebomb. Not only will setting their ship on fire destroy it, it will flush the Bard Star from his hiding hole so I can end him. We'll meet after you gather the supplies. Over here! Get on board and let's go! The ship's under attack. Pretend you're part of the crew and maybe the slavers won't notice. Don't come out! Don't the deck and use the firebomb. I'll search for the captain. Scathing fetcher! I'll kill you!
fire while I deal with this flea. Hmm? <laughs> nice. We make a great team. Now let's get off this burning ship. Turn to your senses. Let's talk. So, care to tell me what you're doing on that slaver ship? This is the port town of Sedanin, on the island of Vardenfell. We fished you out of the burning wreckage of a slaver ship near Firemoth. If you're not a slaver, why were you dressed as one? We? Hmm. I'll let Governor Salvi sort this out. She wants to see you. Best not to keep her waiting. Come with me. A rescue sergeant? Let me just record the name in my ledger. Not this one. Governor Selby doesn't want an official record. Really? Very well. The governor's in her office. As governor of this region, I have questions that need to be answered. We found you among the wreckage of the slaver ship, and we found a strong box with your name on it in another wreck. I'll give you the strong box if you tell me the truth. Did she? And where is this writ? I don't see any writ. And without a writ, all I have is a murder. Take your strong box, but we'll hold on to you until I have proof of your claim. I have no patience for tale tellers or slavers. A moment, Governor. Here's my honorable writ of execution for the slaver, Captain. Hmm. These papers appear to be in order. We're done here, hero. But don't worry. I'm sure we'll see each other again. I suppose you can go now. And we'll leave your name out of the official record. Just don't make me regret this. Someone, we need help! There's an armager injured on the road outside Seydanin. So much blood! They, they need help! I'm not exactly sure. The buoyant armager was accompanying Canon Valasar on a mission for Lord Vivek, but something terrible must have happened. Canon Valasar sent me to find help. She's on the road just outside of Seydanin. Will you help them? Forgive me, Outlander, but I have enough to deal with. I'm just a simple tribunal priest, and the trouble at the ancestral tomb was too much for even our buoyant armager to deal with. I have failed Lord Vivek, and left a colleague alone at the tomb. Lord Vivek sent the three of us to seek guidance at the Andrano ancestral tomb. We were attacked when we got there, and our guard was seriously hurt. I barely got her to safety. But we failed to complete the mission Lord Vivek bestowed upon us. Canon Levoul. He remained behind after we retreated from the tomb. I know he wants to get back inside and ask Lord Vivek's questions. But there's no way he can get past the Daedra or ask the questions on his own. May the three grant him wisdom. Dyser, what's wrong? Someone help! Why, the three! First a wounded armager, now this! By dawn and dusk, evil creeps through the shadows of my beloved Vardenfell. But an outlander arrives to aid my people, just as I have foreseen. Those words... what do they mean? What? What happened? Merciful Azura! The Mother Soul spoke through you! It's a miracle! Lord Vivek, protect me. 
That was Azura, the queen of the night sky. And you, she spoke directly to you, Outlander. I'm surprised the Daedric Prince would risk Lord Vivek's wrath to proclaim a prophecy. But she did say you were here to aid us. The Daedric Prince Azura possessed that woman and spoke through her. I've heard of such occurrences, of course, but to witness such an event. She said evil creeps through the land. I wonder if it has anything to do with what we saw at the tomb. We sought guidance in a matter that concerns Lord Vivek. I received specific questions to ask while Levul concentrated on summoning his ancestor. The Daedra ruined those plans when they fell upon Urnsi, and we were forced to flee. Vile creatures from oblivion! You hear about an odd ghost or a nest of vampires, but never Daedra! Please, if they're still there, they'll rip Canon Levul apart. He's definitely not a warrior. Just look at what they did to the buoyant armager. The buoyant armagers comprise one of the military orders of the Tribunal Temple. They seek to emulate Lord Vivek's deeds through actions and words. Poor Urnsi. Those monsters went straight for her. Her blood flowed like lava from Red Mountain. Where are you from? Children learn of Red Mountain before they even taste Flynn. The mountain sits at the center of Vardenfell, periodically rumbling like a sleeping Nyx shaking its leg. Lately, however, it seems to be waking from its long slumber. Azura is the cruel but wise Daedric Prince of Dawn and Dusk. She's one of the good Daedra, for what that's worth. But for her to speak through an innocent means something terrible is about to happen. Why else would she dare Lord Vivek's wrath? What do they teach you where you come from? Lord Vivek's a living god! Azura is merely the anticipation of Sophocle. Vivek stands as the present and the future, while Azura clearly represents Vardenfell's past. So no, they don't get along. You don't know Lord Vivek, one of the living gods of the Dunma Tribunal. You must be new to our land, Outlander. But there's no time. Canon Levul remain behind. He needs help if he's going to get inside the tomb and ask Vivek's questions. Yes, one of the god monarchs of Morrowind. He's the warrior poet who lives in a grand palace in Vivek's city. Lord Vivek sent us on this holy mission to request information from Canon Levul's ancestor. It breaks my heart that I have failed him. Let Lord Vivek down. Those monsters, it, it's too dangerous. What am I going to do? Did Canon Valasar send you? Oh, she did, didn't she? That means she made it to Sedanin. Vivek, be praised. Will you help me complete my mission? It would be sacrilege if I don't enter my family's tomb and make Lord Vivek's inquiries. As the saints declare, the tribunal always provides. We'll need to be cautious, however. Daedra invaded the tomb. Makes it hard to talk to one's ancestors while monsters try to eat you. I'll also need your help when we reach the summoning chamber. Take this scroll with Lord Vivek's inquiries. While I summon forth my ancestor's spirit and concentrate on maintaining the connection, you must ask the questions. He insists we use the exact phrasing. We can go inside when you're ready. I've already lost precious time due to the buoyant armager's wounds, but I suppose a few more moments won't make the volcano erupt or the moonlit fall from the sky or anything. <sighs> what else can I tell you, my friend? I'm not quite sure and it wasn't my place to ask. When your living god gives you a task, you say, Yes, my lord. The questions seem to involve the time before the tribunal, which I assume is why we must ask them of my long-dead ancestor. A few of my contemporaries can boast of a luminary such as Farina Andrino occupying a prime branch upon their family tree. Lady Farina studied at the feet of Sothaseel and was counted among his companions before the tribunal rose to power. Who oh, Sothaseel? <laughs> it's like asking who are Vivek and Almalexia. They are the tribunal, the living gods of the Dunmer. Sothaseel is the architect of time and the binder of oblivion. 
If you want to know more, we can talk after we've finished. Well, I can tell you why they weren't here the last time I paid my respects. Canon Valasa thinks they're some kind of Daedra, determined to keep us from fulfilling Lord Vivek's will. Until you showed up, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Before we go in there and face those monsters, I want you to know how much I appreciate your aid in this matter. Just don't lose the scroll that contains Lord Vivek's questions. Now come, let's call forth my ancestor. I'll open the tomb door. Follow me, but keep an eye out for those Daedra. Careful. The creatures attacked as soon as we entered the Hall of Remembrance. This used to be such a peaceful place. I came here as a young acolyte to meditate. We're nearly there. Then we can summon my ancestor. Summoning chamber. I'll call forth my ancestor, then you can ask Vivex questions. Hasn't my rest been disturbed enough by those filthy Daedra? Why do you summon me, descendant? My Lord Vivek has inquiries that only you can answer, my lady. My companion will present them, with your permission. The warrior poet? Very well. Ask Vivex questions. Ask the warrior poet's questions, Outlander. Ah, Lord Vivek always had a way with words. Tell him to rest assured. The heart remains safe. I wonder why that concerns him. Ask the remaining questions as my time here is short. An enemy of old, yes. But not the one that Vivek presumes. Sotha Seal imagined multiple scenarios and contemplated endless solutions. He even experimented with his divinity, drawing energy to study before returning it. Loss will come, he foresaw, but not until the collapse of the temple. Now, back to sleep. I hope that's what Lord Vivek needed. Let's talk outside. Thank you for helping me complete my task. Now, I need to return to Vivek City. Have you been there? <laughs> it's amazing. Ziggurats rising out of the water, the moonlit hanging in the sky above. Hey, you should meet me there so I can introduce you to Lord Vivek. <sighs> Just between us, I understood neither the questions asked nor the answers received. <sighs> Not that I expected you. 
Some things aren't meant for mortal minds. That's another reason for you to come to Vivek City, to help me explain what my ancestors said. Excellent. Uh, I just need to make a quick stop in Sedanin to check on my original traveling companions. When you get to Vivek City, head right to the palace and I'll meet you there. I know that Lord Vivek will want to reward you for assisting me. I'll be along shortly. When you get to Vivek City, head directly for Lord Vivek's palace. Once there, I'll make introductions and we can tell the warrior poet everything we've learned. Of course. As I said, the tribunal consists of our three living gods, Vivek, Almalexia, and Sothasil. They lead us in spiritual matters and rule over Dunmi society as god monarchs of the Dark Elves. I serve Vivek, but honor the entire tribunal. Unfortunately, no. The Dunmer houses bow to the tribunal, but the savage Ashlanders refuse to acknowledge their divinity. The heretics never allowed themselves to be assimilated into the great houses. Instead, they hold to primitive superstitions. Bah! Dull clawed pieces of... Ah! Ah, yes. Hello. What are you doing out in the middle of nowhere? Going for a walk? This one often walks. Around here, I mean. Nervous? Me? Ha! Do not make this one laugh! Halin here is just... just horrible! Bandits kicked this one out of his home and stole his crops. Halin here is just a simple farmer, you see. They will make me a starving pauper! You will help? Oh, bless you! This one planted his crops in a cavern nearby. Zane Sipilu, please, retrieve my notes and poison the water. Without proper irrigation, the plants will wither. It pains me to kill them, but these bandits must not prosper. You are a true hero, Walker. A brave and noble warrior. Falora and I are forever in your debt. Hmm? Sorry, I was just... Uh... Hey! You and I have the same belt buckle. What are the chances, huh? I am sorry. This one is a nervous wreck. Hollingier is growing a rare Kajiti herb. Very delicate and very desirable. Good for seasoning fish and soothing the humors. Satisfied? Do not worry, Walker. You can depend on Hollingier. Falora is this one's loyal farmhand. She is not very bright, and she is very lazy, always scribbling notes and asking silly questions. But I keep her on anyway. Hollinger always does right by his friends. I could, but this one likes Falora. Plus, she probably knows too much. Oh, uh, she knows too much about uh, my farming practices, yes. <laughs> Hallingir has many secret farming tricks, like using fish heads and guar dung for fertilizer. But this one has already said too much, yes? So you've agreed to help Hallingir destroy his crop? I'm not sure whether to be heartbroken or elated. Just be safe, all right? This task is more important than you know. Well, we wouldn't want that, would we? What? No, don't be absurd. Just do as Hallinger asked. Deal with those ruffians in the cavern. We'll speak more later.
Sarah, a moment, please. You made it. Good. We have a great deal to talk about in a short period of time. In a clearing to the southeast, but that can wait. I trust you've seen what Hallinger and I were growing in there. Moon sugar. In its raw form. It's a crude narcotic, but if you refine it, it becomes something truly odious. Skooma. I had to be sure he could do it. Moon sugar is temperamental. No one's been able to grow it here in Vardenfell. Until Hallinger. I need you to take the notes you found to Captain Bethis in Seda Neen. Tell him everything. He'll handle the rest. It's complicated. I was a member of House Redwin's Narcotics Oath Bureau. I... I made some very serious mistakes. If I brought this tip to Captain Bethis, he would ignore me. But he has no reason to distrust you. Please, do this for me, Sarah. I'd rather not discuss it. Suffice it to say that the skooma trade offers many dark incentives. Especially for undercover officers. It's easy to cross the line. Too easy. Hopefully this arrest and seizure will help me make amends. If you'd ever taken it, you'd know. Skooma is a powerful hallucinogen. Addictive, deadly, and cheap. Lethal overdoses are routine in Morrowind. Once it's got its hooks in you, you'll do anything to get it. Steal, rape, kill, whatever. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. He's developed a method to grow vast quantities of moon sugar in Vardenfell. That's a dangerous skill. Too dangerous. Can you imagine what would happen if the Kimona Tong Kran family got a hold of his notes? Harlinger is no Daedric prince, but his work could be just as destructive. Please, just do the right thing. You are kind to check up on Hallinger, but this one is fine. Again, thank you. What? How could she? Why would she do that? Hallinger is no threat to anyone. Skuma? No, no, no. Hallinger does not make skuma. My sister and cousin were both addicts. This one would never make such a thing. I only grow moon sugar, Walker. For personal use, you see. You would not ruin a life over such a thing, would you? Hey, Hollinger has huge appetites. A little sugar in the morning to start the day, a little in the evening to soothe the soul. Moon sugar is a beautiful thing, my friend. The Riddlefar's gift to all Khajiit. Is the pursuit of pleasure really so bad? Hollinger is glad you agree. This one just needs to gather his belongings, then he will be on his way. Not now, citizen. I'm up to my armpits in problems today. Harlinger? I thought him a clueless sugar sop. If he's managed to grow moon sugar here in Vardenfell, he's more cunning than he seems. Make no mistake, we'll find him. The tribunal thanks you for your help, Outlander. Take this as your reward. Did you need something else? A skooma baron you'd like to report, perhaps? No? Then move along. For Lura, that skooma fiend can barely put her trousers on straight, let alone conduct an investigation like this. You must be mistaken. Difficult to say. If I had my way, she'd be hanging from the nearest tree. I'll pass it on to my contacts in the Oath Bureau. I will be honest, though. Her chances are very slim. Insufferable screw swilling beef with that coffee. And if you're here about the property, you'll need to return later. I'm dealing with some unforeseen complications. Until recently, Bulog Idolus was my tenant. When I learned she used my property to run a skooma operation, she broke into my office and absconded with the deed. Without it, the guard does nothing. They don't believe I own the place. 
It's a total loss. I... But yes, yes, you can. I can't have the place tarnishing my good name. If you recover the deed and key, I'll sign it over to you. Bulag Idolas had a falling out with her old partner. Zugograph, I think. Try finding him wherever scum accumulates in town. I don't know you, and I don't want to know you. Yeah, so what? I might, for the right price. But my loyalty is... expensive. Huh. So you do know how this works. I searched her place the night she left town, but the only thing worth taking was some old papers. You paid well enough, so I'll let you look through them. Check my bag. Honor and service. Welcome to the Guild Hall, Knowledge Seeker. What brings you here today? We're book hunters of a sort. We seek out new information, capture it in our libraries, and make copies for distribution across Tamriel. The Guild doesn't care about battlefields or boundaries, just knowledge and the acquisition of new tomes. We provide training in unique spells and abilities only available to members. And from time to time, projects crop up for those with an adventuresome spirit. You may end up working with the Guildmaster himself. Banus Galarian, one of the founding members of this august body, still holds the proud title of Guildmaster, overseeing every guild hall in Tamriel. He works with other ranking members, such as Tellinger, the Artificer, to ensure our future success. We are neutral in the war between the three alliances. When we're on guild business, we kneel to no king or queen. That's why you'll see members of every race in our halls. Excellent. You are now a student of the Mages Guild. Every book you find will now earn you reputation in the guild. Welcome to the Hall. What can I do for you? Stars above, yes. Welcome to the Fighters Guild. You should consider joining up. We have a new Guildmaster and a new singular purpose. You look like just the kind of candidate we want for new comrades in arms. Right. Our new Guildmaster is an Argonian, sees all colors. She has us all hunting down the Daedra and their damned anchors. You might have seen them. Enormous chains. Plagues of Daedra boil out to lay waste to the countryside. Hard fights. Ha! There's a good question. We train our members in special techniques. And the higher-ups are always looking for motivated members to help with special projects. You never know, you might be the next Yofnir. Guildmaster Jofnir passed away recently, very suddenly. I always thought he'd die with a blade in his hand. But he passed away in his sleep, called to Sarven Guard by his ancestors. We all miss him, but Colors has proven to be a very able leader. No, we only draw blades in service to the Guild. We're technically neutral in the war between the three alliances. We love the Eagle Banner and Her Majesty, of course, but every race, every creed belongs under the Guild Hall's roof. Then let me be the first to officially welcome you as an associate of the Fighters Guild. Get out there and take the fight to the Daedra.
This is the person who helped me at the tomb, my lord. Lord Vivek, we don't need the help of this outlander. Oh, oh hush, Arch Cannon Tarvis. Outlanders have their usefulness, and this one intrigues me. As you say, I'll be in my office if you need me. Step forward, friend of Lavu, and let us speak. Canon Level says you helped him in his mission. As I have written, the one who helps my ally becomes my friend. Despite the Arch Cannon's concerns, I greet you with sincerity and pose a simple question. Will you assist us further, Outlander? I have ordinators and armagers at my disposal. Vast armies of followers and dedicated priests. What I don't have, however, is a fresh perspective. Will you set aside your personal goals for a time and become the eyes and ears of a god? Good. I need assistance to investigate a strange phenomenon that the ancestor confirmed may indeed be a problem. We'll start with a simple divination ritual. Archcanon Tarvis can tell you what we need to delve into this mystery. The situation that troubles me has taken a toll on my Archcanon, but he's a faithful servant. Tarvis will do as I say, and I say we need your assistance. Find the Archcanon in his office, and he'll tell you how to proceed. The Daedric Prince? I suppose the same events that concern me might interest Azura, though she could just as easily be the source of these troubles. Red Mountain, Strange Daedra, and then there's... well, we'll talk more about that when you return. Levul's ancestor assured me that a source of power remains safe. As for the rest, let the guess ripen in the mind and only speak when the fruit grows certain. I require more information on these matters, hence the need for the divination ritual. Ah, Outlander. Lord Vivek trusts too much to put his faith in one such as you, but who am I to question my god? I suppose he sent you to me so I could put you to work? Did he say which task he wants us to accomplish first? Ah, yes. We do need to perform a ritual to reveal the nature of the... phenomenon that vexes Lord Vivek. Now listen closely. I hate to repeat myself. Despite my objections, Vivek believes you were sent to help, so I'll do my best to assist you. Go to the ziggurat that's still under construction and tell the Overseer that Lord Vivek requires the Blessing Stone. Then bring it to me in the palace. You'll receive a simple errand in the service of Lord Vivek and countless questions form unbidden in your mind. Very well. Go ahead. Ask your questions. It's not like I'm the busy arch cannon of a living god or anything. Ah, the ignorance of Outlanders. How refreshing. The Blessing Stones serve as repositories for small amounts of Lord Vivek's power. They allow his favor to permeate sanctified locations. We need such a stone to power the divination ritual. If you haven't guessed yet, the phenomenon interferes with Lord Vivek's power in unusual ways. It will be safer for everyone if I perform the ritual by using the Blessing Stone instead of drawing on my Lord's personal store of energy. Even if I told you, you wouldn't comprehend it. Lord Vivek's senses eclipse those of mere mortals. Suffice it to say, he feels a disturbance in the flow of energy throughout Vardenfell. He seeks to discover the source of that disturbance. Lord Vivek sees signs and portents everywhere. It's the poet at his core. I tend to be much more pragmatic. Sometimes a volcano is simply a volcano and not a harbinger of doom. As for the Daedra, I have no idea. Perhaps a summoning got out of hand. Offend me? You give yourself too much credit. No, I feel the same about all outlanders. 
This is tribunal business, best handled by tribunal resources. However, I also obey my Lord Vivek, so I will tolerate your involvement and do my best to aid you. This project has been nothing but one disaster after another. How am I expected to get this ziggurat built on time when things constantly go wrong? Don't mind me. I'm just having one of those days. Our blessing stone? Do you know what happens if we give up our blessing stone? Well, neither do I, but I'm sure it won't put us back on schedule or end our string of disasters. I'm not one to disagree with the Arch Cannon, but that's a terrible idea. Lord Vivek? Why didn't you say so? But I'll need your help before I can turn over the Blessing Stone. The passage that leads to the Consecration Chamber collapsed, trapping some of my workers. If you can clear the way, you can borrow the stone. I appreciate the help. Just remember that you're only borrowing the stone. It needs to be back in the Consecration Chamber before the next shift or we'll never get this ziggurat constructed in time. Thank you. I'll go tell the... The Outlander returns. I understand there was trouble at the construction site, but you were able to save a few of the workers. Lord Vivek always draws the straightest arrow from the quiver. Praise the Tribunal. Did you bring the Blessing Stone? Stand over there. In Canon Level's absence, you will form the third corner of our ritual triangle. When you're ready, place the Blessing Stone and we'll begin the ritual. and reveal the source of Lord Vivek's distress. A clockwork mage? A Daedric cultist? Something interfered with the ritual, my lord. But we may have learned something. Excuse me while I compare the results to our previous research. Between the cryptic warnings of the ancestor spirit and the unexpected result of the divination ritual, I fear there may be more astir than I imagined. We solved the greatest mysteries by accident, I suspect. Hmm. I should write that down. We learn from every action we take. Failure or success, each result teaches us something, at least in the larger sense. To be more specific, no, not as much as I hoped. Images that suggest avenues to investigate, riddles to solve. Let me tell you a secret, Outlander. It concerns a living god and energy that fades like daylight as dusk spreads across the land. Listen well, and speak not a word. My divine energy, it drains away. Whether from illness or foul malady, I know not. You must travel the land and seek answers on my behalf. But first, gratitude before service, as I have written. So thank you. The ritual confirmed my worst fears. Divine energy flows out of me for no reason that I can discern. I felt the power imbued within my Blessing Stone get wrenched away as soon as you added it to the ritual. I couldn't stop it. 
to quote my own words as the warrior poet, no lock exists that the determined thief cannot open. Follow the trail of my missing energy, and try to discover the identity of the enemy Lavul's ancestor warned us about. Something drains my energy. Find Archcanon Tarvis in his office, and ask if he gleaned anything useful from the ritual. If not, I know his earlier research indicated new avenues to investigate. Go where he tells you, and learn what you can. My divine energy diminishes with every passing moment, but the ritual confirmed my affliction is not natural. I regret that I could not reveal the full nature of these dire circumstances until your trustworthiness had been demonstrated. Yes. While Archcanon Tarvis has always been cautious about ideas and ideologies that didn't originate within the Tribunal, and recently, that prudence has grown a thousandfold. He's a faithful servant, however, despite his narrow-mindedness. I've always used my power freely and without detriment. I create the Blessing Stars, hold the moonlit above the city, and perform a hundred miracles a day to benefit my people. I begin to feel the toll this liberal application of divinity costs me. I care little for my own safety, but my people are another matter. Without my power to stop it, the moonlit will crash into the city and kill hundreds, perhaps thousands of innocents. And that would be just the start of Vardenfell's woes. At first, I barely noticed the loss of energy. But as I continue to grow weaker, the more it feels like an attack against my person. Besides, the Ancestor Spirit confirmed that an ancient enemy was to blame. We just need to determine who, before... Let us not dwell on disasters to come when we have problems enough to deal with in the here and now. Consult with Archcanon Tarvis, and discover the source of this attack. Then we can put an end to it, and not worry about what might have been. They always chide me about my flagrant displays of divinity. But so far, I am the only one of the living gods whose power is fading. Almalexia hoards her energy and has barricaded her temple against attack. As for Sotha Seal... My brother... travels. We have not heard from him for quite some time, but I sense that he remains safe and in possession of his full power. Funny. He always wanted to discover the limits of our divinity. Perhaps I will solve that mystery for him. Another adventurer looking for work? Did you? Well, that's why it was posted. It's simple. Citizens tell us what they need and we arrange for the job to be completed. You will be able to meet with a client before starting the task. They'll also have your reward, not us. Belaru Omaril and her brother Trelan will handle your assignments. Check in with them frequently to see if they have a job for you. They'll inform you what you need to accomplish and who made the request. Belarus requests may appear straightforward, but many adventurers find them difficult to accomplish. The assortment of enemies she'll ask you to face are all powerful, and I would recommend gathering allies before heading out. Trelan handles requests which the Temple has special interests in. His tasks require more subtlety, but they are by no means easy. Make sure to listen to his explanations carefully. It's also a good idea to speak to the clients beforehand. Trelan, I would hope. You came to us, after all. Trelan and Bellaru are just down the hall. They should already have assignments for you. Speak to either of them to get started. This is bad. This is... You look well-traveled, friend. Are you, by chance, going to Sadrath Mora? I can make it worth your while. Opportunity? Or well, that's what I thought. Until I angered De Fair by failing to deliver the special mushrooms he ordered on time, lost the shipment. 
Now I'm in a bind. I have the mushrooms, but I'm afraid fear will evaporate me for late delivery. You aren't at fault for the late delivery, so fear shouldn't do anything to you. Won't do anything to you, I mean. I guarantee it. Besides, I'll let you keep the payment he owes me as well. I'd rather avoid the situation altogether at this point. You're saving my life here, friend. I don't dare refuse the order, but I also don't want to meet a displeased Telvani. For someone who's helping me out this much, you can ask as many as you like. Sadrath Mora is up on the eastern coast, so you could walk, but I wouldn't recommend it. Talk to Cinder, our local navigator. She can sail you up there on her next trip. That's how I was going to get there until I missed my delivery time. The Telvani aren't like you and I, friend. They're powerful and quick to anger and have no qualms about harming those who displease them. No clue. If a Telvani mage wants them, I can only suppose they have magical properties. You won't see me putting them in any of my stews, that's for damn sure. I performed that ritual countless times, and it never exploded in my face before. If I discover that you sabotage the divination... No. I shouldn't take my failure out on you. It's not your fault that things are... difficult. How do you know about... Lord Vivek told you? Of course he did. It's his prerogative, I suppose. You must swear to keep this secret, though. There would be panic in the streets if the people believed one of the tribunal was incapacitated. It's true. I'm much better at scholarly pursuits than field work. And the ritual wasn't a total failure. It confirmed three locations from my earlier studies. Balmara, Aldrin, and Berazar's Tower. I need you to investigate each of these sites. I researched what I could using the resources available here in Vivek City. To learn more, I need an agent to personally assess each location. Lord Vivek thinks you're the best one for that job. I hope he's right. I believe the mage seen in the ritual is Berozar, who works out of an ancient Velothi tower. His experiments radiate energy similar to Vivek's affliction, but they're not a perfect match. Find out what he knows about the transfer of divine energy. House Redoran controls the town and nearby mines. House Halalu also has interests in the region. Rumors of a cult in the area concern me the most. I believe we saw a cultist during the ritual. Make discreet inquiries and see what you can learn. I have no idea. That's why we're sending you. I suggest you start at the inn. Secrets get spilled along with the drinks in such places. The miners may know something as well. I've heard that House Redoran has issued some kind of proclamation. Savage Ashlanders, like the one seen in the vision, use the area as a tribal meeting ground. These nomadic heretics deny the divinity of the tribunal and have no love for Vivek. But how they could be involved eludes me. See what you can uncover. I traced tendrils of Vivek's energy to these locations, and the ritual confirmed the connection before it went awry. Just don't discuss Lord Vivek's condition with anyone. We don't want to start a panic. If anything changes here, I'll contact you. We're just about ready to set sail. I don't know about you, but the moonlit is looking a little too close for comfort these days. We're headed to Sadrath Mora, if that's where you'd like to go. Just decide quick. I want to sail on the next tide. Ah, it warms my scales to see you once more, my friend. I wish I could thank you for my freedom, but as you can see, it was short-lived. I see you still wear no shackles. Will you aid me once more? I know someone who needs help. In truth, you would be helping many, Saxleil, 
myself included. During my latest escape attempt, I met an amber beauty with eyes like summer rain. Her luchial name is Sun in Shadow, but I call her my heart. She hatches a plan to set us free. Seek her out in Tel Naga. If I know my heart, she will be sunning herself in the light of some book. Always reading that one, always learning. If all goes to plan, she will read her books beside me in the boughs of a hist. Soon, I hope. Walk with Sithis, my friend, and mind the Telvani. They spin lies like an elder at the yarn wheel. I ventured too far from the hist and did not heed the bird signs. Dark elf slavers spine hooked me near Thorn. I escaped four times, but never for long. Eventually, the Telvani bought me, at a discount, I am told. I take pride in that, at least. Mortal laws are slippery things, like greased eels. The Ebonheart Pact outlawed Saxleal slavery to placate our people. Unfortunately, House Telvani refused to join the pact, so they are free to gather up our eggkin by the bushel. I thank you for your offer, but I tire of breaking free only to be recaptured a day later. Sun in Shadow's plan will earn us a lasting freedom. If you help her, you help me. Mages, mostly. Members of the so-called Great House Telvani. One of the four great houses of the Dark Elves. They love using that word, great. Great at ruining lives, perhaps. Not just our people, his child. Khajiit as well. For a Telvani, life is nothing but a cheap struggle for mastery and control. Mastery of their dry-skinned magics, control of their mushroom towers, and dominion over people. People like us. How I long to see you smile. Ah, love. How cruel the fates that keep me from my heart's desire and force me to lock away my true feelings. Chains bind my heart, yet it yearns to beat free. Oh, what does an outlander know about the complexities of Dunmary love? But you're only trying to help, and maybe I do need a simpler perspective. How does an outlander convince an overbearing mother that the object of their affection is worthy? Of course not. Tuwin is a slave. My mother's slave. I tried to buy her freedom. The mother laughed at the mere suggestion that I'd be allowed to sully our reputation with a noir bride. Perhaps an outlander's offer wouldn't rouse her suspicion. I don't expect you to pay, obviously. It's just that Mother might reveal what it would take for her to release Tyrwin if it was anyone but me asking. Knowing that might give me some idea of how to free my love. It couldn't hurt to ask, could it? Tell her you've heard Tyrwin excels at finding red star shells. Telvani wizards prize them, and they're very rare. Most of the locals know that Tyrwin is the best at finding them. Mother loves to gloat. I couldn't bear gazing upon Tyrwin since Mother rebuked me. But now, I can't wait to see her lovely face again. I'll be down at the swamp where she hunts shells. Come find me once you've finished dealing with Mother. She'll be at our tower. Yes, can I help you, Suryo? Bless his eyes. Yes, I'm Sun in Shadow. Yoki told you I have a plan to earn our freedom, right? It will require finesse and discretion. I trust that I can count on you for both. To earn my freedom, I need the help of Magister Therama. You sound like Yoki. I'm an Argonian, true, but I'm also Telvani, as were my parents. The Hist can't help us here. We must count on our wits. I've studied spellcraft since before I could lift a broom. All I need is the sponsorship of a Magister. Therana's been haranguing the council, trying to get their help in claiming Zane Teraras from House Redrin. She wants something in that shrine. I aim to get it for her. Her mouth, Erevan Anthem, has a letter that contains the clues we need. Be cautious in the council house, Sarah. House Tilvani is not just some beast you can slay. 
In this place, subtlety will serve you better than any shield. We have to play the game. Truthfully, it doesn't. Not yet. Telvani plots take time to develop. If I demand the OP's freedom too early, I show my hand. Suddenly, he's a valuable piece in the game, moved and sacrificed as the Magisters see fit. Do I sense a rebuke? It's not ideal, I know. Look, I treasure Ioki. He's placed his trust in me. I hope you'll do the same. Ah, it was during one of his many escape attempts. I was cleaning Master Otheri's tableware when Ioki burst through the kitchen door, dragging his chains behind him. He threw open the window and started to climb through it. Then he saw me. He hesitated, even smiled. You don't see Mars slaves smile much. Certainly not when they're being chased by Nick's hounds. They dragged him off and threw him in the dry box. He told me he'd spend a year in there if it meant seeing me again. There's an old alchemist's proverb. No reaction is ever so forceful as the mixing of opposing components. A mouthful, I know, but it fits. Ioki and I occupy different poles on the same spear. He keeps me grounded. I keep him safe. One more late shipment, Bolin, and you will never work in Vardenfell again. I'm terribly sorry, Master. It won't happen again. Ah, another useful idiot approaches. And what trifling matter brings you to me? I trust you're not here to waste my time. That would end badly for you. So Edrino finally came through, did she? And she sent you in her place, no doubt because she believes I will turn her into a Vardvark. Or such nonsense. The things these commoners believe. I shall, of course, dock her payment for the late delivery. If you're lying, you do so remarkably well. If you're not, it is of no concern to me. You will receive the same coinage either way. Take it and be about your business. And tell Edrino that if she fails again, I shall locate another mushroom seller. And that concludes my deliveries for today. What an exciting life I lead. And who might you be? Master Erevan is away on business. Has been for some time, in fact. I know a prowler when I see one. What do you want? No one just wanders into a council mouth's office looking around. I should report you. What are you really after? And do be honest, we've already wasted enough time here. Ah, the one about Zane Tiraris, is it? Well, I could call the guard and be about my day, but I am a Telvani after all. We don't turn away an opportunity when it presents itself. Perhaps you could help me with a problem I've run into. It's a matter of literature, or lack thereof. I wrote a poem, you see, a cloying, drunken mess of a poem. The post delivered it to my darling Ether and Dora just this morning. If you get it away from her, the letter is yours. She spends most of her time in the study, here in the council hall. She's very diligent, always leaning over one book or another. And the way she licks her thumb when she turns the pages. Sorry. You'll find her in the study, yes. The poem's terrible. Plus, if word got to my parents that I'd been courting a wood elf, I'd be written out of the will, repeatedly, with red ink. Then there's also the possibility of blackmail. Why do you think Ethan Dora keeps it on her? She knows that if Master Erevan gets wind of this, he might dismiss me from his service. Clever minx. Working for a council mouth is a fine occupation, Fla. I can't risk losing it. She's such a pretty, dainty thing. Not at all like those other scrawny Acon elves. Add a half bottle of shame to a lusty heart and you wind up with some very poor decisions. Hmm. 
Guess I need a tighter purse. I hope this is good news. Well, did you get my poem? Quick, give it here! Phew, what a relief. All right, Fla, I'm going to burn this embarrassment. I sure hope I didn't leave Master Erevan's correspondence box unlocked. That would be careless in the extreme. Farewell. Good riddance to bad writing. I was afraid you'd been compromised. Were you successful? Did Anthem have anything worth reading? May I? Ah, a saint's relic. Saint Films. Never heard of him. Hmm. Says here the Redoran wanted too, to squirrel away in some musty old chapel, no doubt. We need to make sure Therana gets it before they do. Looks like the shrine is locked, protected by some puzzle ward. Luckily, the letter provides some hints on how to break in. Solve the puzzle, grab the relic, then make haste to tell Barana. The Rana should be there. Offer her the relic on my behalf. Somewhere between certain and apprehensive. The Telvani respect all clever schemes and love to barter. This little intrigue will prove my worth, I know it. Then again, she could just try to take the relic by force. Run? Telvani magisters wield magics that put Giuliano's to shame. Of course, you're quite the hero in your own right. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. To eat this week, work. Yes, mistress. Well, get to it, now! Yes, mistress. Sorry, mistress. Pardon the mess. My slaves require another lesson concerning their work ethic. And they're no good overseer as well. I suppose I'll have to wield the lash myself today. Have my friends been gossiping about her again? You'd think there were no better topics of conversation. Yes, Tyrwin is my slave. She's no unshed Nixhound, but she's still a capable harvester. What do you want to know about her? Well, I need someone who can do that too, and I already have, Tyrwin. Seems like you're out of luck. Baseless slander! Though I do tire of these ugly rumors surrounding my son. Three red star shells. That's the smallest offer I'll entertain. A bargain. You, what I'd give for just a glimpse. Well, did you speak to my mother? What did she say? Knowing her, it's something incredibly unreasonable. Three? Three? That's as many as Terwin manages to find in a month. And she's perfect. No, 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 no. If mother found out, she'd never let Terwin go free. Not for any price. It's an unreasonable sum. But the fact that she asked for red star shells might work in our favor. I've been training a Nyx hound to help Terwin so she can spend more time with me instead of in that vile swamp. Aside from the fetch a fly incident, Nixie's got a solid track record. I'm certain she won't let us down. She's around here somewhere. Nyx hounds vanish when they're afraid, and Nixie's a bit skittish. She'll head off toward the water after I call her. Look around the shorelines, and you'll probably find her digging up shells. Just go where she points. Come on, Nixie, show yourself! There you are. Nixie, go find star shells. Show this nice person where they are.
What are you doing? Stop! Who are you? These are given lands, you know. Take any star shells from this speech and you'll have them to reckon with. He sent you here. To what? Spy on me? To find that can't even find privacy out in this forsaken muck. Because this is the one place I'm permitted to go that he's too afraid to follow. Out here, I don't have to endure his constant fawning or pretend not to see him watching me out of the corner of my eye. Love! I'm a slave and he's my master. Or as close as makes no difference. Wouldn't so much a smile in his direction if it didn't spare me the rod. Tell me why he has you gathering red star shells. What's he up to now? God, no. Fear of his mother's wrath is the only reason I can keep him at arm's length. If he's getting this bold, I have to get out of here. What Lonus wants for me isn't freedom. You really want to free me. Help me get away from these people. Faris keeps my servitude obligation hidden in a house. Steal it for me. I can forge a signature. It won't be perfect, but it should hold up well enough to get me out of Tavani lands. I don't want to be bought! I want to be free! After all Faris and Lonus have taken from me, I don't want them to profit from my release. At least let me cost them. This one will not hesitate to tell the gods. Do I have to summon? By sea and spleen, you will pay for your actions. You're leaving the estate. You decided not to help me, didn't you? I knew I shouldn't have gotten my hopes up. You really did it. You... What's the catch? What do you expect for this? I... I don't know what to say. I was resigned to my fate before you showed up. Hardly seems real. Maybe it isn't. Not until I'm staring at the shores of the Somerset Isles. I'll need it. You didn't ask for anything, but I want you to have this. Just the gold I managed to hide away over the years, minus what I'll need for passage. Not payment, a gift. For a friend. Goodbye, and thank you so much. Hey, get away from her! You will ruin everything! Shut up, you slavering jackal. You see this? I'm free. Such displeasure and disappointment. Nothing works, even though every calculation is precise. 
How an interruption. How infuriating. Wait, wait. Sometimes the great gear turns from frustration to opportunity. Divine energy. I'll have you know I participated in Lord Sothis Seal's nine analyses of the exalted enigmas. But we have more important matters. I'm about to determine the correlation between color and time, and I could use another set of hands. A reciprocal exchange. Interesting, yes. I can see the benefits of such an arrangement. Very well. Just activate the crystals in the proper sequence while I modulate the energy flow. Less chance of an explosion that way. Such a waste, repeating words. Activate the crystals in the proper order. It's all about colors, like a rainbow. Make a mistake and reset the mechanism using that lever, unless it explodes. You'd be surprised how often that happens. You activate the crystals. Look for pure light. Not good help is as rare as the legendary. the benefits of an extra set of appendages. The energy flows freely and without disruption, allowing the rods and the pistons to align in a most pleasing manner. <laughs> Thank you. Now, why do you want to know about divine energy? Scent. How intriguing. I was just thinking about my former master, Sir Vasil, and the experiments we conducted. He desperately sought to understand the power he and his companions attained, especially whether or not that power was temporary. Not while I assisted him. He had a tool that he used to drain away minute bits of his own divine energy to store and study. He could extract it and return it as he saw fit. Not sure what became of the tool, but here are my notes from those days. More questions? Well, Lord Sofa Seal attributed curiosity to intellectual superiority. Suppose I should do the same. Ask, and I will attempt to tighten the cogs of your ongoing education as best I can. Odd question. Is a hammer a weapon? A saw? A Dwemer spring spanner? No, it was just a tool. A device crafted by Sotha Seal to aid in his endless experiments. I suppose I could imagine ways to modify the device, but for what reason? Hmm. Haven't a clue. Tools have a way of wandering off when you don't stay vigilant. I had a guava used to swallow tools when I wasn't looking. Glowed for a month until the enchantment dissipated and the tool passed. Have heard the screams. I was his apprentice, but that was years ago. Spent time working in the Clockwork City. That's what I learned about energy transference, Dwemer engineering, mechanical symmetry. Made me the dark elf I am today. I have a question. Who sent you? The Arch Colonel, Lord Vivek's High Priest. Suddenly the gears are lying. I can think of a number of reasons that Alm and V would want to know about C and his tools, but some doors just shouldn't be opened. He is the father of mysteries and the architect of time, one of the tribunal, the three living gods of the Dark Elves, creates all sorts of helpful and intriguing devices, like the Clockwork City. I haven't seen my old master in many years. It's a wonder and a miracle. 
Oh, brass tunnels, glass domes, and giant gears. He was inspired by the work of the Dwemer. The Clockwork City is pure so for seal. <laughs> he made it to forge the future and reshape the world. I learned a lot there. Hold, citizen. Be wary, traveler. Pilgrims have been attacked on these roads. Should you encounter violence, don't hesitate to call on us. We're here to protect you. I hope your confidence is merited. We have our hands full with the dreg and the Ashlanders, so rescues are in short supply. Captain Artesia Naros is at the canton of Molagmar. She can tell you more than I. Safe travels. Grunting each to each. What a terror. What savage speech. Oh, to be like if you're passing through, pay attention. I'll say this once. <clears throat> Pilgrims who ignore my warning vanish from the roads by morning. Whether you're from near or far, best keep your arse at Molag Mar. I find it best to put official notice in verse. Helps people remember, and reminds them buoyant arbiters aren't ordinators. Nobody wants to talk to them, even other ordinators. Now, if I could get someone to tell me who's attacking these pilgrims. If you're offering. I suspect Ashlanders are behind the disappearances, but I don't have the numbers to chase them off. If you can sneak into their camp near Molag Maw and find me proof of their involvement, I could finally get some reinforcements. Avoid killing the Ashlanders unless they give you no choice. I don't need you starting a blood feud with my forces split. Now, I must be off to hold the heroic line at a deeply fishy mine. Such is the life of a buoyant armager. As a rule, they don't like us. So when our people start disappearing, not long after an Ashlander tribe set up camp near Molag Maw, I wager it's more than a coincidence. Just a dreg infestation. We have them contained. They're an untimely distraction, but nothing we can't handle. Once the dreg finish mating, we'll clear them out while they're still sluggish. Shouldn't be more than a week. The Vex finest, fleet and fit. Besting heretic by sword, an ordinator by wit. Sworn to live a life of noble grace, except to laugh in danger's face. And sometimes we quammer wrangle groups of pilgrims. Warrior poets are quite versatile. The door is open! Open at last!
Oh, excellent. Another clumsy adventurer bumbles into my home. I really must put a hex on that lift. Have you come to rob me? That would go very poorly for you. Sun in shadow. Oh yes, I know the lizard. An enterprising young mage, if memory serves. Don't look so surprised. Her magical abilities are the worst kept secret in Sadrath Mora. What does she want? I hope you bring more than boring salutations. Do you now? Well, she's a clever one, isn't she? Even convinced you to do the work for her. Impressive. So, what does our scaled friend want in exchange for this relic? No, no, no. Give me a moment. I'm keen to guess. She wants her freedom, right? Oh, good. I was afraid she'd do something boring with her freedom, like run off into the marsh to worship trees or some such. Sun in Shadow shall have my endorsement. I'll give you a writ. Deliver it to my mouth, Erevan. He'll know what to do. Do you need something? I'm rather busy at the moment. Oh? Let me see that. Submit to Council. Argonian slave freed. Services to House Telvani. Well, well. I've always known Sun in Shadow to be ambitious, but this is quite the master stroke. I shall take this to the Council and send for her. Feel free to wait in the Council chamber. We will rule on this matter soon. One other thing. Some of my personal correspondence went missing recently. If that ever happens again, the Morag Tong will hear of it. I trust we understand each other. I'll give this to the Council. this moment since I was a hatchling. I knew I'd be free eventually, but now that the moment's here, I just hope I don't embarrass myself. They'll deliberate, needle each other a bit, then set me free. I only hope that they'll take me on as a hireling as well. I'll even get my own quarters. Can you imagine that? Not only my own room, a whole house to myself. My heart is racing. Yes, of course. I mean, eventually. We can talk about that later. Just let me bask in this moment, all right? Truly, I couldn't have done this without you and Ioki. A plan is only as useful as the people who carry it out. You have my deepest thanks, Sarah. Now, I suppose it's time. Hist bless you, my friend. Sun in Shadow's tail quivers with joy and her heart leaps over the moons. I have never seen her so happy. At last, she can roam free and read her books in peace. I erect the spine of gratitude. Yes, I garden like a caterpillar, one leaf at a time. Even so, I accomplish more in one day than these dark elves do in a week. But my words wander. I bring news from my heart. She wishes to see you in her new dwelling place. Indirectly, my son in shadow leaves nothing to chance. She must climb to a higher branch on the Telvani tree, one she calls Retainer. Once she claims this title, she will set me free. So I plant myself like a sapling and wait. <laughs> 